Oh, welcome. Welcome, one and all, to The Late Show. I'm your host, Stephen Colbert. Tonight... Everybody's excited, because tonight, Trump gave his State of the Union, and we are live, if what you call we just watched living. It was, uh... Pretty raucous on the Republican side, uh, I'll tell you that much. Mm. Fairly quiet on the Democratic side, because it was Nancy's house, okay? <laughs> she showed great restraint, did not stick yeah. out her tongue once. Wow. <laughs> she was chewing on her for a while, but did not stick it out. <laughs> this was not a particularly good speech, but what it lacked in quality, it made up in length. <laughs> it was... It was like... This speech was, uh, like watching paint lie. <laughs> now, uh, leading up, uh, to the big speech, the president refused to give any spoilers. You'll hear the State of the Union, and then you'll see what happens right after the State of the Union. Okay, yes, uh... <laughs> that is how time works. Thank you very much. Yeah, yeah. Throughout the speech, uh, Trump stuck to his teleprompter most of the night. His staff tried to keep him focused on the prompter by adding a bouncing cheeseburger. <laughs> With a snap in, snap in. What, 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 what? <laughs> no surprise, the Democrats who have announced their 2020 campaigns already really tried to make a splash with their invited guests. Elizabeth Warren brought an employee of the U.S. Department of Housing and Urban Development, furloughed during the government shutdown. Kamala Harris brought an air traffic controller who went without a paycheck during the shutdown and lost her home in a wildfire. Not to be outdone, Senator Cory Booker brought a hero from his hometown of Newark, a flaming parked car. <laughs> mm -hmm. You stay strong, flaming parked car. Early, early in the evening, I had high hopes. Uh -huh. I had high uh -huh. hopes, especially when CNN teased us with this graphic, Trump leaves White House soon. <laughs> Come on. Come, come on. You can't. You can't tease like us. That. That's not cool. CNN. <laughs> Uncool, CNN. This just in. President Trump has officially stepped down the front stairs to get in his car. <laughs> Everybody was there, including Don Jr., who apparently arrived uh, with police. Uh, kind of how it is for him now. Uh, cops hang out near him with cuffs uh, open and ready. <laughs> Trump uh, started the night by choosing Energy Secretary Rick Perry as the designated survivor. So, that's in case if something, God forbid, had happened to the Capitol tonight, a meteor took out all of our leadership, Rick Perry <laughs> would be our only hope. <laughs> and an expert on Rick Perry has this reaction to that choice. Oops. <laughs> yeah, oops indeed. Oops indeed. <laughs> State of the Union, all, always a big night. Always a big yeah. night. Everybody who was anybody who was not indicted was there. <laughs> Let's see. Uh, Democratic women wore white to commemorate the suffragettes. <laughs> Beautiful. Yeah. Beautiful. Yeah. That's amazing. Beautiful. So, so, the Democratic side was a sea of white, and the Republican side also a sea of white. <laughs> now, as, as he entered, he did the normal handshaking. It took a moment to shake the hands of the people who will eventually decide if he can be indicted. <laughs> it was a wide-ranging speech. Trump honored some wonderful children, some World War II veterans, some former prisoners who were freed by clemency or new prison reform. I think he declared himself president of Venezuela at one point. <laughs> when the speech began, uh, one of the first things Trump did was introduce his wife. Madam Speaker, Mr. Vice President, members of Congress, the First Lady of the United States. That's a really smart move. Say who she is, then wait for her to stand up <laughs> before acknowledging her. That is the, uh, hey, champ, of forgetting who you are currently married to. 
He started, he started the evening. What's up, big guy? He started with a call for bipartisanship. The agenda I will lay out this evening is not a Republican agenda or a Democrat agenda. It's the agenda of the American people. Can somebody please tell them these were their ideas because I'm getting killed in the polls right now. <laughs> and he took a moment to tout American greatness. America saved freedom, transformed science, redefined the middle class, and when you get down to it, there's nothing anywhere in the world that can compete with America. Home of the Whopper. <laughs> undefeated heavyweight champion of the world. America, <laughs> it's everywhere you want to be. ba da ba ba da I'm loving it. <laughs> and I could go for one. I could go for one. But I'm loving it. Why not? I'm, I'm loving it, John. I don't late, know about you, but I'm loving it. it. I, ain't, I ain't messing with that. And he presented a stark choice. We must choose between greatness or gridlock, results or resistance, vision or vengeance, incredible progress or pointless destruction. Soup or salad, <laughs> paper or plastic, <laughs> Ross and Rachel, <laughs> alien versus predator, whoever wins, we lose. <laughs> and of course, some predator fans. Alien versus Predator. Alien versus Predator fans. Alien versus Predator fans. Of course, he bragged more about the economy. And we are considered far and away the hottest economy anywhere in the world. It is so hot. <laughs> if it wasn't my economy, perhaps I'd be dating it. <laughs> and that's... Oh, no. That's true. Oh, no! Yes. I'm just... I'm saying, John... John, I'm telling you, John, you know, no. I love a hot economy. The evening went on and on. <laughs> GOP lawmakers stood up and sat down so many times it sounded like they were making popcorn with their kneecaps. <laughs> he made a not so subtle threat to House Democrats. An economic miracle is taking place in the United States, and the only thing that can stop it are foolish wars, politics, or ridiculous partisan investigations. You heard me. You get the truth or a functioning economy, okay? <laughs> Keep in mind, I turned this sucker off for a month over a wall. You think I won't burn this place to the ground to stay out of jail, okay? <laughs> I'm just saying, nice country you got here. Shame. Shame that something happened to it. Oh. And in that same vein, he kept going in what was clearly, what he clearly thought was a line that would get a standing ovation. If there is going to be peace and legislation, there cannot be war and investigation. <laughs> it just doesn't work that way. <laughs> even, even the Republicans were like, hey, did he, what? <laughs> What? Nice try on that argument. You can't have legislation and investigation. <laughs> Who ever heard of law and order? Come on. I mean, you can't have both. You have to choose. I mean, romance you have to choose. Finance. John, you have you to choose. Saying? You have to give me that one. I, you minutes. have to give me that one. And Trump talked the talk on immigration. Now is the time for Congress to show the world that America is committed to ending illegal immigration and putting the ruthless coyotes, cartels, drug dealers, and human traffickers out of business. And no one knows how to put something out of business like Donald Trump. <laughs> you can take that to the bank because they are repossessing it in the Chapter 11. Now, Trump knows. Trump knows immigrants are taking American jobs. Working class Americans are left to pay the price for mass illegal immigration. Reduce jobs. But he also knows this. More people are working now than at any time in the history of our country. 
Both of those things are true if you don't think about it too hard. I don't. I don't think about it at all. Okay? Yes and no. And he laid out a strong argument against illegal immigration. Tolerance for illegal immigration is not compassionate. It is actually very cruel. I mean, not kids in cages cruel, but still pretty bad. <laughs> the point is, and this is my point ultimately, tolerance is cruelty, war is peace, freedom is slavery, and I weigh 239 pounds. <laughs> Trump. <laughs> Trump. <laughs> Trump was bravely willing to take credit for any good thing that happened in the country. No one has benefited more from a thriving economy than women who have filled 58% of the newly created jobs last year. They're way ahead of you, Don. <laughs> Most of those jobs were new Democratic women in Congress. Um, <laughs> and Trump supported their celebration with this. You weren't supposed to do that. <laughs> Donald Trump trying to tell women what to do is why they won. But, 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 but come on, Trump rolled with it. Don't sit yet, you're gonna like this. I resign. <laughs> Is that not what he said? Is that not what he said? Alhanda. Oh, no, he didn't say that. Alhanda. And he rolled out some policy proposals to appeal to working parents. I am also proud to be the first president to include in my budget a plan for nationwide paid family leave so that every new parent has the chance to bond with their newborn child. Because, you know, some people are too busy to bond with their wife and newborn child. Instead, they are forced to go to a vodka launch party and tag a porn star. I'm sorry. <laughs> not on my watch. No, no, I'm sorry. I meant to say, not while anyone is watching me. <laughs> Trump also made... Gets you. Gets you. Gets you right there, Chris. Trump also made a big announcement about his buddy, Kim Jong-un. Chairman Kim and I will meet again on February 27th and 28th in Vietnam. Unless my bone spurs act up. <laughs> in which case, I'm sending Eric, okay? <laughs> Strap on. <laughs> Strap on, Eric. <laughs> Trump made sure to insist that this government will strictly enforce its small government stance. We are alarmed by the new calls to adopt socialism in our country. America was founded on liberty and independence and not government coercion, domination, and control. We are born free and we will stay free. Uh, Jimmy, hold on. I, I believe we had a mic on Bernie Sanders for that. Can we, can we go back and turn that up? We are born free, and we will stay free. <laughs> I can't wait. I can't wait for the new season. So good. He's so good. I love Ashanda. Then he ramped up for his big finish. Together, we represent the most extraordinary nation in all of history. What will we do with this moment? How will we be remembered? How many years will we serve, and will we get time off for good behavior? <laughs> and, and... <laughs> and he ended his speech with some lofty words. This is the time to search for the tallest summit and set our sights on the brightest star.
That I believe, because I actually remember seeing Trump set his sights on the brightest star. <laughs> and then he, then he brought it all home. He brought it all home with a simple plea. I am asking you to choose greatness, no matter the trials we face. Well, in that case, sir, I choose you face a trial, because that will be great. <laughs> Stick around, we've just begun.